about, uh, as the title uh, says, uh, full counting statistics of charge fluctuations, and uh, uh, since it's a very broad audience, I try to, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, to keep it uh, as simple uh, as, uh, as uh, possible. So first, uh, uh, I give some motivations, which is uh, related to, to, to Benoit's talk. So, I mean, uh, you should... Uh, I will not define a a anything, just uh, giving some broad motivation uh, um, uh, for, for uh, our project. Ah, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say something important. So this is work based um, on uh, two, two papers and one who should appear soon with uh, Benoit, who is in the audience, uh, myself, uh, William Dixak Krempa, and uh, Clément Berthaud. Uh, and both of them are in, uh, are in Montreal. Uh, yes, so broad, broad, uh, uh, broad motivation, so there were already a few talks mentioning this. Um, uh, and and this, is what, uh, this is the type of question we are interested in uh, at the beginning, and then we decided uh, uh, let's do something a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, similar. But, uh, but um, yes, so imagine, uh, so for me it's going to be, yes, very, very concrete. Imagine I have space which for most of this talk will be R2, okay? It can be, you can do more complicated things, you can do higher dimensions. I will make a comment on this, but uh, let's imagine a space which is R2, and you have some region uh, uh, in the, somewhere in R2, which I call uh, A, okay? So it has a boundary, it's nice, uh, everything. And uh, in all this talk, B is going to be always the complement of, uh, of A. Okay, so there is A and there is B. Uh, in the spirit of quantum information, A is a list typically and B is Bob. Okay, and one thing uh, you can do is uh, you imagine you have some quantum system, which I won't tell you what it is. Uh, you have some Hilbert space, you, you do a bipartition, and uh, you can compute uh, something called entanglement entropy, okay, of region A, uh, with respect to this bipartition for some pure state uh, psi, okay? It has many nice properties. Uh, in particular, uh, you can show that SA equals SA. Okay, and one question uh, people have asked uh, over the last few years is uh, typically you, you have some wave function on your computer. Imagine you can compute this thing, which I won't tell you what it is. It was explained in Benoit's talk, uh, which is entanglement entropy. And you try to see how it behaves when the region R A gets larger. Entanglement scaling uh, here, and so one. So either you say uh, you, you imagine that region A becomes bigger and bigger, or one, one convenient thing, uh, especially for this talk, we to consider that you have some region A which is fixed forever, and then you just dilate it by some <coughs> and so you multiply A, the size of A by two by three, and you want to uh, study what happens when L goes to infinity. Okay. So this is one thing you do with this thing called uh, entanglement entropy. And the point is, uh, this is supposed to be interesting. Okay. So, uh, so the, the point is, uh, if you do that, <coughs> if you, make function, you compute this entanglement entropy, you claim you will be able to extract some useful information. Okay. And for example, in the context of uh, quantum Hall effect or topological phase, uh, there are well-known papers. Uh, by uh, Kitaev, uh, Preskill, and Levin Wen, who tell you that if you have a, some topological phase in two dimensions, you compute this entanglement entropy, you scale L to very large value, and typically there will be a linear term, okay? And there will be a constant, so in, in, uh, formally it's an expansion uh, for large L, there will be a linear term, there will be uh, a constant, and this constant is interesting, tells you something about the, uh, the, for example, the underlying TQFT, okay? So the point is you compute this, 
And if you don't know anything about the wave function you start from, you can extract this number, and this number is interesting. It gives you some information. So at least that's the, the claim. Uh, of course, I mean, you could also play this game, compute entanglement entropy in some wave function, and get completely meaningless results. I mean, it's not a priori uh, guaranteed that you get something uh, interesting. But, uh, but in that case, uh, it's a, uh, it's a well used uh, concept, and even a well used practical means. So you have some wave function on your computer, and you can extract this, this universal number. Okay, it has, been, it has been studied also in the context of quantum criticality. Uh, so there are other systems which, uh, with an algebraic decay of correlation functions, and you can extract uh, something. So for example, in 1D, if you like conformal field theory, you can extract the central charge just by uh, doing entanglement scale. And of course, there is a whole, it's a whole business. There is a whole zoo of uh, what you can do, because you can, in principle, choose whatever wave function you're interested in. And you can also play around with the geometry, right? For A, I can choose, uh, in principle, whatever I want. And so you can do the, the, you can do the, the shape I was describing, but you could uh, study some cylinder which you cut in two. You can uh, consider some geometry with corner. You can do a strip. You can do whatever uh, you, 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 you want. And sometimes, you do one geometry, you don't extract anything interesting, but then you add corners and suddenly, uh, and suddenly you get some critical exponent or something. So it's not, uh, uh, so it's a bit uh, case by case. And uh, the, 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 the motivation behind this talk, which will be in a sense, <laughs> uh, um, is, uh, uh, is to look at a simpler observation where uh, I can, uh, in a sense, if you want, uh, separate the contributions from geometry, <coughs> the choice of region A, from the contribution from uh, <coughs> underlying uh, physical systems. Okay, so I want to play a game. I want a simple, very simple toy model, in a sense, or uh, toy quantity, where uh, I can uh, precisely tell you I do an asymptotic expansion for some region A. Okay, and uh, what 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 this physically extract. And so this uh, okay, we, and so we did not uh, at all invent invent this, uh, but um, but you can consider the following uh, uh, problem. So I will make it uh, slightly more concrete uh, later on. But you imagine some physical system. So for example, uh, there were many uh, Laughlin states uh, shown uh, before in this uh, in this conference with some charge Q. Or if you want, charge can be particle number. Okay. Uh, and you imagine it is conserved, so in whole space uh, it stays constant to some number uh, n. Okay. And you imagine it has uh, some kind of local support. So you can, you can write this formally, at least, as an integral of some density uh, over space. Okay. And if in interesting physical systems where Q is conserved in whole space, it might not be uh, conserved in uh, some other region, uh, some smaller region A, such as the one I showed uh, before. And for example, you can show, you can you can study uh, the variance for, for this charge in a subsystem A. So you, cho you chose a region A, and you compute this charge variance, or second cumulant, <coughs> for uh, charge uh, fluctuations, uh, which is defined uh, like this. Okay? And since I'm assuming uh, I can write this formally as an integral over some local density, uh, what, I'm, what I'm really doing is just computing this integral over A squared, density density. That's the only thing I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, really, really doing. And so this has been studied in many contexts. So I think in, in the context of, um, uh, if you want, plasma and, um, and uh, Coulomb gases uh, in, uh, already in the 80s, probably it dates back even, even, uh, uh, even longer. In condensed matter also, this has been, uh, this has been used uh, to uh, to, to study certain certain quantum systems, for example, you can play this game simply with an interval in one on the real line, and uh, you you do that for a Luttinger liquid, and you can extract the Luttinger parameter from this. So this is what uh, was done, uh, and there are also uh, some rigorous results uh, on a, on a Coulomb gas, uh, which uh, I will uh, I will uh, comment uh, on. And, and uh, an example, so an example I will use uh, throughout. Uh, I mean, what, an example I have in mind for this talk is simply uh, the, the low flint, flint state, which was shown uh, several times uh, before. So it's a many-body wave function for n uh, electrons. And so here n will be actually the total charge, okay? Uh, and it's given by this, uh, uh, 
uh, where m is, uh, is, uh, is some, uh, say some integer. Okay? So if m equals 1, this maps to free fermions. Otherwise, uh, for m equals 3, this is the famous Laughlin state. Uh, and so on. So I have to. You don't well, scale the exponent. What? Don't scale the exponent. Yes, here yeah, I don't scale the exponent. Uh, I can. Yeah, so what, what, what it will do is that the, 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 if you increase n, the, this will increase in size, yes. So yeah, sometimes you put an n before here, so that the droplet, uh, when you send n goes to infinity, has a... <laughs> but I think, but since in the spirit of the talk is to study larger and larger regions, I want to keep it like this, so that it goes uh, uh, like this. And here I'm just showing a sample, I forgot for which value of n is. Um, maybe five or three, I forgot. Uh, but uh, but the, the warning I was just telling is that you won't learn anything new about Laughlin set, but this is, will be a very nice example for, uh, for what uh, I want uh, to do. Okay, this is one sample, and I think if I uh, did it correctly, and here I superimposed like uh, uh, something like 100, uh, 100, 100 samples. Okay, and if you want to play now, so this is uh, uh, if you want to play this particle statistics game, okay. So the way I, I draw it, I mean, the, when you send n goes to infinity, so the radius of this, of this uh, droplet uh, will be proportional to square root of n. Okay, and so one one thing you can do is you, you draw some region uh, subregion a here in the bulk. Okay, uh, and you see uh, how does uh, how do particle fluctuation behave when you increase the, the size of. Uh, uh, the, the size uh, of a. and in principle I want to be able to do that for any reasonably looking uh, looking uh, shape and for example so I was talking about the variance but if you want just to compute and, yeah. and numerically this is extremely easy to, to measure because for example imagine I do something a bit simpler I just want the mean number of particles where I draw I draw a region a I just count the number of particles I have in my region I divide by number of samples and I get the mean. And for the variance, you just uh, do the same with squaring the number of particles. Okay, so it's it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, so it will serve as a as a nice example example. And now I I, I will uh, tell you what we really uh, really do. Uh, so I, I was talking about the variance, but you can do the same. You can define similarly cumulants. Right. Instead of uh, uh, integrating the two-point function connected, you will integrate the three-point function connected, uh, and so on, uh, and so forth. Um, and, and actually, we can treat uh, all of them sort of on an, an equal footing. And I will be, so in my example, this will be realized. I will be, for example, in the bulk of my quantum hole droplet, which means uh, I have... Uh, uh, I have... Um, how to say it. I can uh, I can put some uh, extra assumptions in the problem we were studying. So, for example, it's well uh, uh, it's well accepted that in the droplet there is transaction invariance. Okay, there is supposed to be in the bulk also rotation invariance, inversion, and stuff and stuff like this. Okay, and it's also well accepted that uh, uh, the correlation function they decay very fast. Okay, so here since I have transaction invariance, I can always decide at one point. Is at position zero, and the statement is that whenever any of these arguments r one, r m minus one, uh, is large, uh, then uh, this goes quickly to zero. Okay. So I mean, physically, so yeah. So it, this is one of those things which, uh, uh, if you're a physicist, is sort of uh, considered trivial, but uh, mathematically, it's uh, highly non-trivial. So depending on where you come from. Uh, uh, Stay uh, here still. Uh, depending on when you're, you're, you're coming from, uh, this might not be. Um, uh, you, you're basically where playing. Is it, where is it physically trivial? No, but it's well accepted. I mean, you, you can measure this numerically, this, uh, ah. this decay, and you see it <coughs> but, uh, but in connection to this droplet, uh, relations is very different whether you took two points in the bulk. One point close to the boundary, yes. the so bulk. The so one point close to the boundary, another point. So I'm, I'm, full, I'm full bulk. Uh, so 
Because otherwise, I agree, this is not true anymore. So you will be in the bulk. Yes, I will do only bulk for this. Uh, so the droplet was kind of... Uh, yes, so the point is I need to be far from the... Yes. So your boundary is not will not be discussed. Yes. Uh, about correlations in the bulk in the Laughlin case, is there a sense that the correlation function is effectively a Bergman kernel but with a rescaled magnetic length? No, no, no. So it's, uh, you, so it's not electricity when m equals 1, and then yes. it's what you said. Otherwise, it's not known. And very little, and I think nothing is known actually mathematically about this. And even to physicists, very little is known. And numerically, is there evidence that something like this would be the case? Yes, or? yes, yes, yes. It's a general story. It's a Gaussian, I should think of it as a Gaussian correlation, even though it's not proven mathematically. So maybe not Gaussian, but at least exponentially. Uh, Getting a thought distances, okay. Uh, yes, and so uh, and I and the reason I, I, uh, I'm having this uh, disclaimer here is that. Uh, for example, with this assumption, you, you can very easily show, and it, this was known actually from before, that the particle variance scales with the perimeter of A. Okay, so you have what you what is uh, anticipating a bit on the following. You have what's called uh, area law or boundary law. Uh, but if you want to prove this mathematically from scratch, it's uh, super difficult actually. And I think the one of the uh, one of the reference I was giving uh, here. Actually, so if I have, a, let's say, a, I draw a region A, which would, which would be a disk with red, radius r. So the physics prediction is that this scales with like r, not r square. And I think the, the best ma mass result is that it's smaller than r square over, over some log r. Okay, so if you want to prove, you're like very, very far from what this uh, prediction gives. So yeah, I want to make clear that. Uh, uh, if, so if you want to prove such statement, uh, I'm not uh, helping you. I'm just uh, starting with this assumption, which is... Yes, just a question. So, of course, for if m equal 1, integer case, yes, yes. it's uh, explicit formula uh, you determinant can. of proofs. But for m not equal 1... And you have, don't have anything. No, you do, and this is my question. Uh, so there is a uh, quite uh, beautiful paper of uh, Jankovic, very old, in the 80s, where that object was uh, yes. understood. You're familiar with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, physically, yes, I, I, it's well understood. It's just depending on where you come no, from. No, no, it's no, not no. rigorous proof. Just let me say. It was computation of the correlation function exactly in this setting in, uh, in as a perturbation series. But then you're on m equals 1, right? For starting from m equal 1. So, M is close to one. So if M is close to one, I agree with you. But if you M is like uh, three, uh, then you you don't uh, you can't. Uh, so it's a perturbative perturbative statement around M. M here is the Laughlin M, not the M here on the in, in ah, well. this formula. Yeah, Laughlin. <laughs> so if you <laughs> so beta, say so let's let's call it beta, and then there yeah, is beta that is beta L is one. Define series in beta minus one. Yes, but, but, also bit one time to, one. Yeah. but this is only perturbative uh, around bit one. And every term, of course, exponentially falling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so it's, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why everybody knew. There were also more mathematical variables. Yeah, yeah, this is only one I have. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. So uh, just, just, uh, but just to make clear that uh, I, I'm uh, assuming something which is very uh, reasonable, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, and uh, and uh, and what we did was inspired by uh, two uh, series of uh, references, uh, one in physics and the other in math. Uh, so there is a nice paper by Grover, Turner, and, and Vishwanath, which study actually ex entanglement entropy, and they 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 think also of some some region A with arbitrary shape. So they think of some some region A with a smooth boundary. Uh, and, they, and they exploit certain symmetry argument based on S, uh, the fact that uh, the, en the entropy uh, is the same as the, the, in A, the same, same as the entropy in B, plus they assume, again, some translation invariance, some rotation invariance, and they can use that to predict, for example, which term uh, appears uh, in the expansion. So 
Oh. Sorry, Jean-Marie, I'm yes. not sure. Uh, I'm not sure to understand, but when you say uh, exploit symmetry, SA equals SB, is it an assumption or a consequence of these uh, so For the entropy of a pure state, this is uh, always the case. So SA okay. always equals SB. And uh, yeah, and I forgot to say, and for the quantity I look at, it's also obvious. Okay. It doesn't it depend on the, on, the, on the shape of, uh, of A or uh, any other properties. It's just the fact that there are two poor states and uh, you, uh, you yes. directly get. Okay. Yes, and also uh, we, we use some, some tricks uh, coming from a study of uh, asymptotics of determinants. So this is an old story which uh, goes back to Onsager, uh, where he was doing the, the two-dimensional easing model and trying to compute uh, the, the exponent for, uh, for magnetization. And uh, yeah, so there are a few, a few, uh, few techniques we use uh, coming from that. So but, but before doing uh, anything, let me check the case. Uh, let me just uh, throw some formula as uh, at you. So you imagine you have some smooth region, so such as the one I was showing in the, in the, in the beginning, A, and I scale uh, A with L. And so as I was saying, the, the, the thing you get is that uh, with this assumption, it's very easy to show that the, the leading term is, uh, is just proportional to L. So you don't have L squared, which you might think could be present. Uh, and uh, you can do a full, uh, full uh, um, Full, actually, a full expansion like this. Uh, but what I want to jo just show is that you have something which is proportional to L, multiplies the, volu the volume of the boundary, so the, if you want, it's like the surface uh, between uh, A and B. Uh, okay, and so this is what is called uh, boundary law or area law in the context of entanglement entropy. But here, with this assumption, you can uh, really write this uh, reasonably easily. And then uh, there is no constant, actually. So. For example, for the topological entanglement entropy, you have the constant, but here there is no constant for this one. Yes, so, but here it's like a. Yes, but if it's fractional, there is a constant. But, no, no, but here for this, there is no constant. And you, you can even explain uh, why. Because it, it's, it's, you're integrating something that is local. So it cannot be, I mean, behind topological uh, entropy, <coughs> the idea that it's not just some local functional of where, of where you are. There is something. Uh, yesterday there was constant. There was constant. Hmm? Yesterday there was constant. This is pure squared, not, not, not uh, entanglement. Yes. It's not related to real. No, no, it's not exactly. It is. This is a uh, moment of charge. Yes. Yes. It, what, what is kappa? Is, uh, yeah, so kappa is geodesic. Uh, of the boundary. Yes. You said that you will be in the bulk. No, because that, there is. Uh, so imagine I, I am in the bulk of my droplet, and I I draw some region A like this. And if you're in the bulk, you can really see, think that uh, this goes to infinity. You don't care. So, and the, the curvature you're seeing is here. So it's completely fictitious boundary. It's I decide what is A, and uh, I see uh, this stuff. So it's not a physical, it's not a physical uh, boundary. And uh, I mean, it's not intuitively, it's not that surprising. So you, you get the, the first thing you see because you might imagine you, you have some system with some correlation length. And you see, okay, only the points close to the boundary are connected. So you, you pick up uh, with this argument uh, just uh, the, the length of the boundary in this picture. And you might imagine that if you push this further, you start to see corrections coming from the curvature and stuff like this. So it's very, uh, very natural. But uh, here the point is uh, <coughs> we have this two point function. So I should say that since I'm. I'm saying is this. This is construction invariant, rotation invariant, and stuff. And what you get uh, uh, is uh, simple geometric moments of this. Okay, so this is really, really simple example where I, this is what, if you play this game of scaling with system size, you extract. Okay, and this is really the only thing you get. So you get these geometric moments of the two point function, and that's the only thing you will ever extract uh, with this uh, uh, procedure. And by the way, in this, uh, those, um, those geometric moments, they are not non-universal. So in a sense, physically, you're not extracting uh, useful, uh, useful information. Okay. And uh, there is a full power series uh, in uh, inverse power. And, and you can show, uh, 
that, that there is no even terms, right? It's one minus one minus three minus five. So they happen to cancel to give zero for some reason. Is it uh, just observation or? Uh, you can show it's a bit complicated to, to explain, but basically this follows from uh, the symmetry with respect to B. So the fact that uh, <coughs> the quantity we compute is the same in A and in the complement, this is what allows you to kill uh, this term. And this is basically the content of uh, the, uh, the Vishvanath, uh, the, the Grover Turner Vishvanath paper. They just uh, use this to kill term and say uh, these terms must be zero. And the same happens here. The only difference is that for this very simple thing, since I'm expressing everything in terms of this uh, endpoint correlation functions, I can tell you uh, what's the coefficient. So I can tell you what I extract. That's it. Uh, will we show one of our cube? Or no? Uh, no, I mean, it, it starts to see uh, kappa 4 derivatives and it becomes very ugly. So, yeah, so, it, I mean, it's, it's uh, I, I am, we did not compute it, but I know, uh, but we know how to compute it. It's just that it becomes increasingly ugly. Coefficient will involve just r to the 6 moment, right? Yes, I, I, yeah, yeah. So every time you would get r to the 6, r to but, the 8. But, but this whatever expression in terms of geodesic curvature is something more complicated. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yes, so this is for smooth region, but you can try to, to do something uh, 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 more funny. It is to just uh, look at the polygon. Okay, and uh, the, the claim is that, in a sense, this is more interesting to look at uh, to look at the polygon. So we do something. Yes, and uh, you get the same area law. Okay, which is not very surprising. The same argument applies. But then uh, it's not, it's the, the, the next term is not the same because you get a constant. Okay. So before the constant was zero. Uh, and if you, and if you, uh, and the funny thing is that this constant, it sees uh, only the, the, um, the corners uh, of your, your polygon. Okay, so it's a sum over all the corners. So there are corners here, here, here. They need not be uh, here, they look like, uh, yes. They can be arbitrary angles, okay? And you can compute it, and what you get is this, uh, is this, uh, is this constant term. And you have some, and the result is some function of the ang opening angle theta, okay? Which is whatever it is, it's one plus pi minus theta cotangent theta, times uh, uh, some rule uh, or moment of f, uh, which is now r to the cube. So if you change theta to, to, to pi minus theta, you will get symmetric. And, and it's uh, it's symmetric with respect to theta goes to two pi minus. You you need to do to check, but uh, yes. to, I don't see this one as being symmetric. Yeah, so I f believe me, it, it works because contingent uh, is yeah, some yes, you can do trust. Uh, yes. Oh, Jean-Marie. Yes. Just a question. So, so this was for the connected two-point function. Yes. Is the, I would hope that these order one terms don't survive in entanglement entropy if you were doing other cumulants. Uh, and no, they, they do. So, so for the entanglement entropy, you have corner contributions. So typically, when you want to extract topological entanglement entropy, you need to get rid of the corner. Oh. Yes. Oh. But here, the corners, they are interesting because, they, because this is the next slide. They are, uh, uh, they are well, I will, I will comment on this. Yes, and just one, one funny one funny thing is that this angular dependence, you see here I formulate things in completely general way. I mean, I, I just give you an F, I say probably DK is fast enough, but I'm not making a statement about physics, can be any, <coughs> phys physics is encoded in the, the DK of the, of the, of the two-point function. But there are many papers that form this angular dependence, and each we are computing in some particular theory. So we sort of realize that, uh, okay, actually, the, this and while computing this corner term is many different theory and finding uh, all the time that I think it was Benoit who put this up, but oh wait, uh, uh, we, we find always the same angular dependence. So it means uh, it means uh, it has to be uh, like this, and we managed to, to show uh, to show this. And uh, yes, and a quick comment about um, why this one uh, I claim is a little bit more interesting is that this R cube, uh, uh, this integral of R cube, okay, so one R comes from just the Jacobian, right? Because I mean, uh, polar coordinates. So this is called second moment sum rule, okay? And so if you have a liquid, like uh, <coughs> the, the Laughlin state is, 
uh, this sum rule is supposed to be universal. Okay, and it's given, and it gives, gives just the inverse feeling, which is one over n. So it means this corner term for Latin states is given, the claim is given exactly by this formula. We don't know what is the, the leading term, which is a real law, it can't compute, but uh, for, the, for the constant, it's, uh, it's this. So the claim is that this is, this is exact. And related to one question which was asked before, so what is not known about this function f? Well, I think the only thing that is known about this function f are the R5 and R, R7 uh, sum rules. So there are also exact formulas for, for this. Uh, and apart from that, to my knowledge, uh, nothing is known. So, so may I ask a question? Yes. So we saw in previous talks and also from old rocks that, is that you can think about entanglement spectrum uh, of, of, yes. the, of the boundary as, as some one dimensional conformal field theory. Yes. So. Um, so now this would break my assumptions because if you have a CFT at the edge, uh, I'm not translationally invariant. Uh, no, but what yes. I'm saying is that can I interpret that result as some CFT, but at corners you have some scattering, so uh, 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 something. No. something uh, can I interpret it the same way? Yeah. Not sure. I, I, I would guess not, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, so, so the point is, if you want, there, there, are, there are universal numbers, uh, and, and we, by chance, uh, happen to find one of them. Okay, to, to be honest, this is not necessarily the most interesting one, because the higher moment of some rule, they can allow you to distinguish between different fractional quantum whole states. So if you want to play a game of identifying some topological phase, uh, actually, it would be better to have those appear. And so there are ways uh, to, to make them appear, but uh, the only way we found were a bit artificial. So here, you, you add corners, and you have to, to find a boundary which is smooth but uh, doesn't have a derivative or something like this. So it's a bit more artificial. <coughs> and we would like to find a natural way like this to, uh, to, find, uh, uh, to find this. Yes, and uh, I don't, uh, how much time do I have? Like... So you yes. have time to 20 plus. Okay. Nice. Yes, and just I will write some equation uh, because it's actually the derivation of this. Is, uh, is, is not, uh, or at least an idea of the derivation is, is, is not uh, uh, that complicated. So let me just do two, three lines of calculation on this blackboard. Uh, yes, so I was telling you that, uh, I forgot what was my intuition, but I was telling you this is what so this is really the, the, the exercise and uh, okay it, it actually depends only on modulus but let's uh, uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, let's do it like this okay but this if you want to have the large region behavior uh, there is a, you will use explicitly translation invariants okay so one way to do it is that you just say you integrate now the whole space okay and you just pick up the characteristic function of A. So T F K A. It's just one if, uh, if A is in A and uh, zero A not in A. Or A in B if you want, because this is a component. Okay. And then it's a simple change of variable, okay? Uh, you do decide that your new variable is like r plus r prime and you keep the other constant. And what you get is the r, the r prime. Okay, I keep the same letter. Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, something like this. F of R becomes R plus R prime, so this is this. Okay, easy. And you see, there is a nice thing that one of the integral uh, you can you can you can get up. So this is integral d R uh, times integral d R prime k a of R plus R prime k a of R. Okay, this times conjunction. And this will explain why geometric moments of F uh, appear. Uh, I mean, it cannot be avoided. Um, 
Yes, and uh, if you sit down and uh, think what this is, so this is something that is one. For this to be for this to be one, you need R to be in A and R prime, R plus R prime. Okay. And so I think this is the volume of A. Uh, I did not screw up. Uh, this is this. Okay, and I think I have a picture if I find the pointer. Yes. So, what I'm uh, doing is this. Okay, and this I can always rewrite. I can always rewrite this as a bit. And I can always say this is almost the volume of A, okay, minus, uh, and I think it's A intersection, it's a bit. I don't need to write, but I think the picture is nicer. Uh, and this is like uh, the red region here. Yeah. So I have a region A, which is whatever it is, it's with this, this shape. I shift it a little bit by some vector R, and then I, I compute the volume of uh, uh, this interface. So I mean, if I did not screw up the picture, this is exactly, exactly this. And so you might think, oh, but there is a, yes, so this was this calculation, and it's easy to see that if you replace A by LA, you can, uh, you can uh, redo this calculation again, <coughs> and you can pull out uh, L square from this, uh, and what you will get is this. So the point is, if you want to do this assumption, you just need to compute this volume where you shift only by a little bit, okay? And this is where this uh, boundary law comes from, right? Because if you have the, the, your shape, you shift it a little bit, you get this red uh, region, and then uh, you see it will be proportional to, uh, uh, to the, 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 to the uh, I mean, it, it, you, you localize if you want to, to, the, to the boundary. And that's, that's how you, uh, and that's how you can do it. And this, and this you can compute to arbitrary order. Okay. And this is what we do. And that's why basically you get, you get uh, powers of uh, L like this. Okay, so this is uh, for a smooth uh, region. But if it's not smooth, if you imagine you have some, so I do just an example, you imagine you have a square, just because uh, this I can draw. You shift it a little bit. So you get uh, something like this, for example. And then the, 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 the area you need to compute is this. And this has an exact formula. So, I mean, as, in a sense, as a function of R, it, it just terminates because it's the area of, a, it's to see the sum of areas of parallelograms. So there is not a full asymptotic expansion. It means you, you, get, uh, you get to this corner term and then you have nothing in principle. So that's, uh, yes, so that's, uh, where, where these terms come from. And so that's why you can compute this to any, or, to any order. So this was done, so the, 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 I should say the real term was done, by, I think, a redone yes. uh, for this, and this is one of the papers I was, I was talking about. But you can push this to arbitrary order, and you can do also this, uh, these corner terms uh, like this. Uh, yes, so this is just to tell you that this was the variance, but we can play the same game with the all cumulants, so for example, for the third cumulants, you need to uh, do this, and you need to compute the volume of the region in yellow. And so now you have, you have A, you shift it uh, by two things, and then you take the, the, the area with the max of, uh, so it's a complicated thing, but you can do it. And uh, it, it basically, it's a similar calculation, but there will be, there will be a max uh, somewhere, because you need to choose the, the curve which is furthest from the boundary. Blah, blah, blah. And that's uh, how you, how you uh, how you get it. And just, so for the symmetry argument, uh, well, I forgot who asked uh, before. So one way to, to, to kill off certain terms in the expansion is actually to say that this is 
by definition, the fluctuations for the particle number in A and in B are the same. So I can try to do the same calculation while reversing A, A and B. And this will be the, the, the blue region. And if you ask that these two are the same, uh, you compute, you compute, you compute, and you can show that you, you kill uh, this, this term. So now I just flash uh, some, uh, some formula. So for example, for the third cumulant. So this is kind of uh, cute. I don't know if it's useful, probably not, but it's a cute result. Uh, so now, it, I, I, I talked about the, about the variance. I said this scale like the perimeter, okay? And this is actually true of all the even cumulants, okay? But the odds, they are a little bit weird. Uh, uh, and actually, uh, you can show that the, the, uh, the uh, surface term or the area low term or the boundary uh, low term, it actually vanishes. So the first term that is not zero is actually a constant. And you can show it's proportional to the integral of the geometric curvature of the boundary. So which means uh, by uh, gauss bonnet uh, this is just the Euler characteristic. So you have something funny where if you compute the sort cumulant for any theory, basically I don't care what, uh, what is your physical system, you compute this in, with some smooth, in some smooth region, you compute the sort cumulant, you will find uh, something that is independent of the shape of uh, A. I mean, provided, uh, I mean, uh, unless it has holes or something like this. Yeah, uh, yeah so this is too pi. And, and, but this some rule, I, it looks nice, but I, I, I mean, if, if someone tells me it has a meaning in quantum mode, then I would be happy, but probably not. But the, the cute thing is the fact that uh, it's completely independent from the shape of, uh, and you can show the same for all old cumulants, actually. Uh, yes, and I think I have an example. Yes, yeah, so because we were, uh, since I, I was using this, this, uh, this, uh, this quantum rule example uh, all along. Uh, you can just do some numerics with the Laughlin state. I think it was uh, filling one half. So M of uh, beta, I mean beta equals two, if you want. So something that is not exactly solvable. Uh, and I do uh, several, several uh, different uh, geometries. I do a disk and I do what, I don't know what it's called, but I call four disks. Like, uh, so one is, uh, is something. Uh, uh, like this, so this is the usual disk, and the other is more like uh, something like this, but it's still, uh, it's still smooth. And the claim was that uh, it should not depend on the, on the, on the, uh, on the uh, shape. And you, you, you see it. So of course, it's finite number of particles, so it's a statement about infinite limit. But basically, the, the message is that uh, as you increase particle number, uh, this becomes flatter and flatter. And so you see the same thing, irrespective of the geometry you have. Another thing you can do, uh, which is instead of uh, doing this, you just uh, pick an annulus. Because in that case, you know uh, if A is this, you know the Euler characteristic is zero, and you see something that uh, goes, to, goes to zero. So the, the best uh, is the, the black line, and you see, okay, it becomes flatter and flatter. So you, you check off uh, this. Uh, yes, and so now some nasty uh, things. Um, because I was telling you that, uh, okay, you extract uh, geometric moments of uh, the two-point function, but actually if you go uh, for higher point functions, you get something more complicated than just uh, uh, integrating r to some power times uh, f of r. So for example, if you do even cumulants, so larger than, uh, so larger than variance, so fourth cumulant, six cumulant, I mean, you can compute, so we, we did. Uh, and what you, you, you pick up for the 1 over L term from before is still the same integral of kappa square and then, the, uh, and then you're supposed to, I'm supposed to tell you what's the physical meaning of this quantity. So I mean F is the M point function and uh, this is, if you do this procedure, this is what you extract. So in a sense, uh, you can say it's meaningless. I mean, uh, uh, you, you, you have this, it's clearly non-universal, non, uh, non it's integrated over some weird domain. But, I mean, at least it's a honest result, this is what you get if you play this game of uh, a sympathetic expansion like this. So it means, and, it, and this is well known, I mean, uh, informally, that, that, um, that uh, basically the higher you go in this expansion, uh, the less uh, physical the term uh, uh, becomes. So you have to stop uh, at, typically at constant uh, order. But just, uh, since I made the claim that we can't compute this to any order, this is the result here. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. 
I don't know so, how to so explain. So you wrote it in a very anisotropic term, like separating x and y. Is any better mode? Yes, so that's a good, yes. So the way we do the calculation, it was easier to, to, to get it like this. Um, and there is a way to rewrite it in more symmetric way, but uh, then the formula becomes bigger. Let's so complex notations, is any particular harmonic moments or anything of the... Uh, I mean, we, uh, we did not manage. Maybe there is a way, uh, but uh, yeah, like this, it's, uh, I agree, it's not uh, fine. <coughs> But since the message is that this is meaningless, then <laughs> and plus you have to integrate in this weird region where one variable is larger than zero and larger than all the others. So it's um, uh, yeah, it's it's, a, it's a less nice in a sense. But you see, there is all the same type of factorization. There is a geometric part, and there is a yes, for even cumulants, for all even cumulants, leaving one of well, always have this kappa squared, the sigma. Yes, always. Yes. Yes. In a sense, this is the only thing you can get um, yeah. compatible it's with rotation. What about generating function into the uh, alpha q? Is it, is it, can, it, can it be combined? Uh, uh, no, I did not manage to combine. So uh, there, there are results for lower order terms, free fermions, where so these were the determinant paper I was talking about too long ago. And, and in some cases, they managed to resum the full thing, which is nice. Uh, uh, yes, but here uh, you can't. So let me just, uh, before concluding, uh, uh, do a few, uh, uh, few remarks. So I, the whole talk was 2D, but in principle, there is no obstacle to playing the same game. I mean, the, I mean basically, the, the formula I wrote, they, they hold in, in any dimension. So in principle, you can play this game of having some region A, you shift it a little bit, and you try to compute the volume. Uh, and you, you can do this. I mean, it's, uh, it's no. Uh, yeah, it's a problem in differential geometry which you can, which you can solve. The, the point is in 2D there is only one curvature, right? And so in higher dimension, uh, curvature becomes a tensor. And so it's not a priori obvious what, what you get. But, but for example, for the third cumulant, uh, what you get is essentially the trace of uh, the, 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 the curvature tensor. And the claim is, even though we, we, uh, that with this method you can do any cumulant at any order, uh, uh, long, and the formula becomes uh, becomes. Uh, but which mode are you mean in RD? No left hand state in RD. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, but I mean, Laughlin is just an example. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just uh, playing a game with some two point function, three point function, and uh, it can be whatever you want. The only thing I need is that this decays uh, reasonably fast. Uh, yeah, so for Laughlin, it doesn't make any sense with it, with 3D, yeah, of course. Yes. This K A A in terms of the two radii of curvature, one of R, one R. So what is it? The sum. Sum. Right? Yes. So the one which mean is curvature. Zero for I, don't, soap I think it's, field. it's called mean curvature. Yeah. yeah. The one which is zero for soap films, right? Is it? Yes. Yes. So you can you can uh, get this, but uh, but in higher dimension it's not topological because you don't have. Yeah. What I'm saying is that if you compute uh, this uh, moments for the for the volume which is bounded by soap films, which yeah. is zero. Yes. And also, if you go to a higher order, then it's not obvious what you get because you can get, for example, that the order where you would get kappa square, then you can get trace k square, or you can get trace k square. So then uh, it becomes uh, more more complicated, but you, you can do it. Yes. And for in higher dimension, so uh, there are, there is a surprisingly high number of papers that. Uh, study entanglement and stuff like on cubes, cones, and stuff like this. So I mean, if you want to play this game, there, there is room for But then it's uh, more complicated. We have a few, uh, a few and, and, and we did not manage to find ways to extract nice, uh, nice, uh, uh, nice uh, sum rules or nice uh, universal result uh, uh, as for the, uh, as for um, the corner terms in uh, uh, the, okay, so now I'm almost over time, so this is my conclusion. So yeah, so really what we did, well, we, we played the game where uh, we integrate some function over uh, some region, and then we try to make the region large, and we see what we get. So the advantage compared to entanglement entropy is that, I mean, it's completely explicit what we do, and then we compute, 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 and then we find what we find, and this is the, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the, uh, this is the result. And typically, this extracts moments of connected correlation function, but it can be more complicated as one formula I showed. Uh, 
So uh, the case of so for this whole thing, I was always assuming that my two-point function, three-point function, whatever, decay sufficiently sl slowly that the integrals I I want uh, make sense. I mean, for example, I mean, if I write the integral of the I'm implicitly assuming that uh, it decays faster than one over R4, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, this is plus infinity. So there are also borderline cases where, which has been which has been studied in the context of fermions with Fermi surface and stuff like this, and in the entanglement entropy. So it's also interesting, but this we avoid it just to, uh, for the case of simplicity. And also one thing which uh, which I mean, hindsight is sort of. Uh, it's sort of natural for the reason I was explaining, is if you do finite size uh, numerics, actually it, it can be much more clever to do, to do shapes like rectangles or stuff like this. Because this way you, you extract what you extract and then the, the correction, they are extremely small. Whereas if you do like a disk, then there is a full series and so this will generate finite size corrections and stuff like this. So if, for example, if you were to, to, to try to extract, so okay, so if you have to try to extract this, even for more complicated things like entanglement entropy, actually it's not it's not uh, stupid at all to do geometries with rectangles and only straight lines. You will get better finite size effects. Uh, yes, and of course uh, all everything in the talk was uh, R two or R D, uh, but uh, I mean he, there is a lot of here for uh, trying more complex uh, manifolds, and so that's a, that's a natural question to to ask. Yes, th so the relation to entanglement entropy is not that clear, I mean, to, to be honest, but at least uh, you have a simple toy model where you can understand uh, to, the ver to the very end. And there are also differences in the sense I was explaining why on some equation that here, everything is completely local, okay? And so topological entanglement entropy uh, is somehow non-local because if it were uh, local, then I claim it would be zero. So, uh, and, uh, and I think uh, that's it. Thank you for. Thank you. Uh, Please questions. What about the cusps? I'm sorry, I mean, if, if you have. Ah uh, yes, yes. Then, yeah, then you can get weird stuff. So then uh, the corner term becomes. Uh, so the corner term was constant. Some. Yes. So if you have, if you have a corner, uh, something like this, then this is basically a to the. Zero, and if you have a cusp, uh, uh, depending on the degree of the cusp, you will get L to some power alpha, which you can uh, compute probably. We did not try, but uh, but, uh, but probably but, but this but is probably minus theta cotangent theta divergence. Exactly. Yeah, so which is why you get uh, this. So yeah, so then the formula doesn't hold yet. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't say, but uh, it diverges as a. Uh, 1 over theta as theta goes to the goes to zero. Other questions, please? Simeon? What if you are translationally invariant but on the torus? Are there any funny effects when you shift these things that can then be outside? Ah, perhaps, yes, yes, yes. Then it would be more complicated. Because here I'm really, I mean, the, my, my, the calculation I showed is really. A, I mean, I cannot break any of the assumptions. I'm really using explicitly full translation uh, invariance. But there are ways, I mean, if, even in the mass literature, I think there are papers. For example, there are cases where I think there, there is a paper by, by Widom where he studies some kind of, I mean, studies something different but, than what I do. But, but if I were to translate into, uh, into, into what, what we do, I would say, so imagine you have a function, so the two-point function depends still as before on the distance, and you could say, ah, but maybe it depends slowly on center of mass or something. So for example, you can, I, I think you manage, <coughs> you manage to form a, a thing like this. So imagine that you depend a little bit on position, but very slowly. And if you do that, well, you can almost, approximate this becomes more complicated than uh, but it does only uh, the, the boundary low term so the leading term so uh, the, the others there are not low. Um, what about hyperbolic plane because on the compact surface I don't even know how you scale your how you put your scaling setup right because yeah. hyperbolic plane yeah. should be I don't know this is interesting also but we didn't do uh, anything uh, 
because the scaling setup is to send the correlation lens to zero instead of touch its equivalent. Sorry, it's it's similar. Sorry. In fact, in the disk, I was doing similar things, right? I was setting the. So I don't. So, yeah, oh. I have a, a maybe an, some naive question, but so as you said, in the case of a, of a smooth boundary uh, on the on the region A, you could use some uh, symmetry arguments to yes. explain why there is no zero sort order term, order term of uh, of L. Yes. And so why why isn't that uh, you cannot use anymore this kind of uh, symmetry argument when there are some uh, angles or cusps? Ah, no, no, it is, it is still true. Uh, the, the symmetry is still, still holds. But uh, what... Uh, so you, you see, when, I, uh, when I'm computing this, so it's actually a technical uh, uh, assumption. But here, I didn't tell you how I compute uh, this volume. And the way you compute it is that you, 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 you parameterize the boundary, and you have some point lying at the boundary. Okay. There is the unit normal. There is the unit uh, tangent. And basically, you compute the, 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 the volume by just computing this distance. I mean, there is some Jacobian and blah, blah, blah. But basically, you, you travel like this, and this is how you uh, compute the volume. But there is sort of an, an assumption uh, like this, is that for this calculation to make sense, I need the normal not to cross. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think in geometry it's called like a tubular neighborhood or something yeah, like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so you need the tubular neighborhood. So this calculation holds if I'm in the tubular neighborhood, which I will always be because uh, this is infinitesimal. So this is yeah, So if you got a... Uh, 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 I travel the boundary like this, uh, I, I screw up my calculation. I double count yeah. some, some regions. So your that's that's not that's not that's not that's that's doesn't work anymore. Okay, okay. Okay, so I do not see any other questions, so let's thank the speaker again. So, I've been authorized to announce a few things. So, first of all, so our conference is officially over, but there will be an informal talk of Paul Wigman, so let's say at uh, 11.35. And now the second thing, so in the name of participants, Alexander Abamo will tell something. <laughs> I was delegated to say a very important thing, which is to thank organizers for bringing us all here. And usually they say that organizers provided a good atmosphere, very productive. Well, they provided us atmosphere outside such a way that we are confined to this hotel. <laughs> and this is make, it makes it very productive. <laughs> if there will be next time, I still have small request that for the half day, day for the, when there is a half day conference day, it's better to have weather nice on the other half. So. But other than that, it's perfect, and thank you very much for doing all this for all of us. Thanks a lot for you uh, for coming, and we should also thank uh, SwissMap and Anton Alexey for hosting us, and to Severin Gross for organizing everything. So let's give them a